Johnny. So we're going to do a bit of target mapping today, or trajectory mapping rather. So we're going to compare between 177 and 22, and we're going to shoot over the effective range of the gun, which is basically out to 55 yards. Um, and we're going to aim at the centre of every single one of these marker targets. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, all the way up to 55 yards. We're going to aim at the centre of every single one, same place, and we're going to see how the pellet will rise and fall on its way through its trajectory. And we'll directly compare 177 and 22, so you can see what's happening um, with each one. Crack on? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so what are our 177 and 22s of choice then? Uh, I've bought with us uh, this, which is a HW100 carbine thumb hole laminate stock adjustable cheek piece um, two stage trigger it's a regulated rifle that's in 177 It'll give you 60 shots out of the cylinder per charge um, it's a 14 shot magazine that's the magazine there and it's a side lever operation on the side here self indexing so the mag automatically turns every time you do this it's got quite a little interesting feature on this gun. It won't actually turn the magazine unless the gun is fired. Get something in pre-charged rifles called double loading, which we see quite a lot where somebody's put a pellet into the breech, they've cocked the rifle, they've pushed it forward, then they have decided to do it again, and then sometimes they do it again, and then sometimes they do it 10 or 14 times, and they put 10 pellets directly into the barrel, and then they wonder why the gun doesn't work, and bring it into us, and we have to melt all the lead out of the barrels. But this gun prevents you from doing that. This is the 2-2? This is the 2-2. This is an uh, absolute classic, this gun. It's one of my favourite air rifles on the market. This is an Air Arms S410. It's called the Super Light um, Carbine. Again, short barrel, short cylinder. You get about 70-odd shots out of this cylinder at full charge. 10-shot magazine, two-stage trigger. Uh, the, the stock is made from poplar wood, which is where they save um, weight basically it's lighter than beach lighter than walnut about 15 percent lighter so um yeah but great handling of rifle love these guns they're just so so lightweight really really responsive and um for vermin shooting they're absolutely fantastic big fan big fan i owned so this is the s410 i do the s510 which is like a side lever version which is none too dissimilar from the virarc that's the s410 then they did an s310 before that which was my first pre-charged air rifle back in 1990 something and um brilliant gun absolutely fantastic gun and the, the the actual valving system inside this gun is maintained in the same format for 20 odd years now um plus in fact um they've changed it slightly now but the the, the basically the fundamental design has um, is, is exactly the same which is testament to how good it is i think if you've if you've designed something and it works really really well no need to change it's that good When it comes to zeroing, I always say zero in at the distance you're most commonly going to shoot at. Um, I tend to try and get myself, so I'm a vermin shooter really, um, I try and get myself to around about the 30 yard mark when I'm stalking in on stuff. Um, target shooters, 30, 35 yards are probably zero in, um, but it's important to know where your gun is going to shoot at all the various different distances. So if you're zeroed in at 30 yards and you go out in the field, you can guarantee if you're driving around shooting rabbits or you're walking around shooting rabbits, you'll have one that will run out of a hedgerow at 5 yards, 15 yards, 40 yards, 55 yards. It won't come out at 30 yards because that would be way too convenient. So you need to know exactly where they're going to shoot and at all those different distances so that you can uh, basically hold over, hold under, depending on where you are, um, so you know exactly where you're going. You want to make sure, spend time doing this exercise. Whenever you're out shooting in the field, if you're shooting anything live, you want to make sure that you, you know, you, you one shot and you've humanely dispatched it. And it's of the greatest importance to spend time doing this so that you know and you're confident you kit exactly where you're going at all those di different distances and you know exactly where to put that, that cross. So that's what this is all about. It's a really good way to boost your confidence with your kit and know where you're shooting at the different distances you can you know there's turrets now for dialing in there's ballistics programs that you can use um, which will which are all very very accurate indeed but i think there's no better way than actually going out and physically um, undergoing a test so that you you can see you can you can read all the ballistics you want but actually physically going out and doing it 
There's so many different varying factors that will change the trajectory of your pellet or your bullet. You've got center line of your scope above your barrel. You've got the weight of the pellet or the bullet that you're using, um, the length of the barrel, the speed um, of, you know, of, your, of your live round cartridge. So it's, it's very important, I think, to go out and do this test. And it's also, what we'll do is we'll, we'll collect all these up afterwards. Um, you can either photograph them or keep them in a file because you do forget things over time or if you're running a few different rifles you think oh where, where was that caliber shooting but if you collect these up and put them in a file you've got like a basically a map of the trajectory of the pellet that you can revert back to and kind of refresh yourself which is nothing but a good thing if you're a bit forgetful good test if you're a dad, if you're a dad and you've been kept up all night <laughs> because you're because you're playing tooth fairy then uh, yeah, this is the one. Right, so I'm going to wind this right down now. Six times mag, we'll start off with the 2-2. Two -two. So we'll go right hand target. There she goes. So I see a lot of people do this, been out rabbit shooting with many people over the years and something will come out really, really close and they'll shoot under its feet because they don't realise that the, the, the closer distances you need to, you're basically your pellet or your bullet is striking out a lot, lot, lot lower. So that's the first, basically the first point of the, um, of the trajectory at five yards. And then we're gonna move, I'm just gonna click that over to the left one. 10 yards. See how we've come up now? Right, 15, you ready? So between 10 and 15, we don't need to worry about that. 15, 20 yards. Really starting to drop down now. Line was good. We are dropping. And then finally, 55. So wind this down again. She's low getting higher nearly there 25 yards 30 yards a little bit off 40 starting to drop again 55. So 177 on the left, 22 two on the right. Centre to centre. We have dropped 26.43 mil. Sorry, we're, we're basically shooting here, so the pellet's striking out underneath the sight line, 26.43 at five yards. And then with the 2-2 we are 20.10 this is probably going to be changed by the, the distance of the scope if that's your if that's your the scope center line there and your barrel center line is there obviously different scopes different objective lens sizes different height mounts is going to change that that's going to have a direct effect on this so again another good reason to undertake the target test five yards right ten Fifth shade under 16 mil, 15.96. And the 2.2 is basically pretty much there now, isn't it? 7.65. So the two are coming up to meet each other. And we'll go to 15. Your 2.2 is pretty much smack on. In fact, it's starting to go a little bit high now by about three mil, something like that. And your 177 is just a little bit under still, 8.5 mil at 15. 20 yards. 2-2 two, two starting to, to raise up, so the, 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 the pellet's starting to rise up above the sight line now. So your scope's always looking in a straight line, your pellet starts up underneath it, goes over the top of it, and then comes back down through it. So now we're at 10 mil. Oh, yeah, about 10 mil centre to centre. Maybe a little bit less on the on the and the 177 is pretty much absolutely smack on smack on the button, slightly off to the side, but that's my fault. Right, 25 yards. 
So your 2.2, two, I probably pulled that off slightly, that's me. 177 has risen up slightly, 25 yards by, nothing to worry about, put it like that, but four mil, just over. 30 yards. So this is the zero point. I pulled that off or winds just pushed it off to the right hand side slightly. Uh, and your 2.2 two is now starting to come back down now. Ten point three four. It's just dropped down slightly. I mean, we zeroed at thirty, so I don't know whether maybe the winds just pushed that down slightly. Thirty-five yards, one seven seven. Aiming here again. Nothing to really worry about. Your two two starting to head downward. So we're dropping just under nineteen mil at thirty-five yards. Thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five. Thirty. No, just under thirty-six. Centre to centre, and look at your 177 now. 14 and a half. So you, you know, you, you, big. Just looking at it without even measuring it, you can see you're pretty much half the drop on the 177 in compa in comparison to your 22. Um, and we'll see what happens a bit further out. 29.93. I mean, look at that compared to your 2.2. You've got that. Again, it's double the drop, 45 yards. Your 177 is shooting half of your 2.2 in terms of drop. So when you look at like, you look at a, a rabbit or whatever you're, you're shooting at and you think, right, that's 35 yards away. If you're, you're looking between these two now, a 2.2, especially at the longer ranges, if you're literally five yards out either side of your mark and you, you incorrectly judge your distance. It can be, you know, the difference between completely missing your target or wounding your target, which is something that you do not want to do. You've got more chance of doing that, I'll be totally honest, with a 2-2. Look at the variance in drop here. You've got a much, much bigger, there's more room for error if you, if you don't get your distance judgment correct. 177 is a flatter shooting trajectory. And we're seeing across this, we're at 45 yards now. It's half the drop of the 2-2. Um, you know, if you do misjudge your distance slightly, we'll look at between 45 and 50 yards, what the difference is between these two. And also interestingly between the two, two. So we've got 62 mil drop. You have to remember this, David, mm. 62 mil against, let's say 29 mil. I think you're missing a sales trick here. Go on. I think if you're selling two twos, you could be selling range finders at the same time. We have them in stock. <laughs> yeah, so 62 being there, we've dropped just over five yards between 45 and 50. You've dropped another, it's just under you know, 30 mil, or under thir um, three centimetres. You know, if you're trying to shoot a pigeon in the head, something like that, that's, you've missed it. Whereas your 177, what were we, 30? So 4 point, mm, 4 point, just over four and a half mil between those two distances. So again, and with the gap's getting even bigger now by the looks of things as well. So go to the last one. <clears throat> Good grief, Johnny. Can you film that for me? <laughs> Uh, next. Uh, so what do we got here? Right, so wow. 110 mil as opposed to, we'll take the average of those. Well, say 70, 70 mil. What are your thoughts after seeing that, David? The thing is, with the 2.2, mm. it's almost more satisfying and more challenging to shoot it. Yeah, it's, you, you have to be more exacting, definitely. Definitely. So maybe a more experienced air rifle shooter might go for a 2-2 because they're pushing their own... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. And some people are just like, we get customers coming that they're just dedicated 2-2 fans. It's like, that's what I've had since I was a, a young lad. That's what I shoot. But you I, have to know your kit. You know your kit. I know what it's doing. It, it, they've done this. They know They know exactly, you know, you're always, you're always working off the same muzzle energy. So 
okay you're going to maybe different in height line above barrel of your scope setting if you've got different scopes on different outfits but basically once you learn this in each caliber it's going to stay in and around the same area so yeah we do get the dedicated 2-2 purists and that's what they want um but as, as far as animal welfare is concerned would yeah you, if you were a pigeon yeah what would you be wrong <laughs> <laughs> um well neither to be honest with you david um <laughs> If I was a pigeon, I'd probably say no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rather any. Thank you very much. But if I if I did have to choose, uh, sorry, I've never put anyone <laughs> in this position before. If I did have to choose, I think it would be um, a one seven seven. Yeah, and um, someone very competent shooting, please, if that's all right. I think the biggest message is when you buy an air rifle, no matter what caliber, whether it's a precharge, whether it's a Springer. Um, if you target shooting, this is a great exercise to perform. I think m more importantly, if you're going to go out and you're going to start shooting vermin, you need absolutely to do something like this. If you're going to go out into the field and shoot something, two things that um, are major to me is one, eat what you shoot. Don't just shoot things for the sake of shooting it. Um, obviously rooks and crows, although we did try some rooks not too long ago, <laughs> didn't we? Um, yeah, eat, eat what you shoot, but also more importantly is um, know where your kit's going. It's, it's, it's a big no-no. Don't just go buy an air rifle if you're, if you're a novice or fairly amateur and just go straight out in the field and start shooting. You need to know your kit. You need to see exactly what you're doing at every single diff given distance. You've got to be fair to what you're shooting at, and, um, and this is the way to do it. How was the rook, by the way? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was all right. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> no.